Hello, beautiful people. I hope all is well. I hope all is well. You are now catching me live twice in one day, which is a rarity. I'm actually pretty exhausted, but nonetheless, the work continues. So if you are new to my page, my name is Allison. I am a certified dating and relationship coach. I primarily work with singles. Ooh, that's my ring light letting me know that's about to die. I primarily work with singles to help them find and keep the partners that they deserve. I normally go live one to two times a week in order to share either my Q&A, which is on Wednesdays, that's tomorrow, or I get the opportunity to interview people who are also in this space so that we can uh, work together to make a difference in the single community and in the relationship communities overall. So if you are new, please let me know who you are and where you are from so that I can welcome you appropriately. And then we are going to go ahead and jump into today's live. Today's live is extremely interesting and will be extremely informative. So I'm going to go ahead and have my guest join us. S-H-A-N-A, -S so I hope that's Shanna. And when she joins us, she can correct us and she can also do her introductions. We can get into what we're discussing. Shanna, did I get it right? Shanna, yes. Uh, okay. Shana. Shana. okay, 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 okay. Hi, yes. how are you? I'm fine, thank you. So, Shanna, um, I know that there are folks who are coming in on your side, so I'm going to do a quick introduction so they know who the hell they're seeing on their screen and you can do the okay. same. So I'll start by saying I am Allison for those who are coming in, certified dating and relationship coach. And my name is Shana Singleton, also known as the Herpes Goddess and founder of Hey Cousins, where we are at war with the herpes stigma until our community feels comfortable being open about their status and proud of their sexuality. If you are a cousin out there, please drop a purple heart for me. Please drop a purple heart. Lovely. Ooh. I know we haven't checked difficulties when i started the live my real life died like it's all right we're, we're still gonna come with the knowledge and the information today so i work primarily with single women i help them to find and keep the partners that they deserve what that means is i teach them how to navigate dating successfully so that they can find their right partner obviously there are millions of people who have a herpes diagnosis and who are concerned about how that can negatively impact the way that they navigate dating so that's why I reached out to you because you are the expert, especially with uh, people of color, I want to say, right? It was mostly your following in our age range. So I was hoping that you could give us some guidance, give us some support around how to navigate dating with people, uh, for people with a herpes diagnosis. So opening up the floor to you, can you give us a little bit of your background? How did you get started in this work? Yes, I can give Give a little bit of my background. Um, I found out I had genital herpes back in 2015 when I found out I was pregnant with my son. Um, ended up having a vaginal delivery. No, my son doesn't have herpes. Um, in 2019, from then in that journey, in 2019, I became a herpes advocate. Um, since then, I have grown the largest herpes awareness platform. I'm the author of three different books, How to Disclose Herpes Diet and Remedies. And my recent book, Just Another Bump Below, just another bump along the road. Um, we have community support, resources. All, if you go to the link in my bio, if you have herpes, your resources are there. And moving forward with the question and dating, right? A lot of people, when they find out they have herpes, the first thing they want to do is date. The first thing they want to do is put themselves out there. And I don't understand why. <laughs> um, the first question is usually, how do I dispose? How do I tell somebody that I have herpes? Yep. And I think that if you're asking me that question, that means you fear disclosure. And it's probably because you fear rejection. Mm -hmm. I say if you fear disclosure and if you fear rejection, you're not ready to disclose. You're not ready to date. You can't ask someone to accept something that you haven't done the work to accept yourself. I mm -hmm. want you to accept herpes, but I haven't even accepted my herpes. I want you to love me with herpes, but I don't even love myself with herpes. So there is a, a how to dispose process, but at the end of the day, if you fear it, maybe you shouldn't be dating. Um, the fear is rejection. And I think that a lot of rejection just comes around the energy surrounded around the disposal. Mm -hmm. 
If you go to a disclosure and you're crying and it's the I'm worthless, I feel dirty, nobody's going to want me type of energy, yes. you're still crying about your ex that probably gave you herpes, that you think gave you herpes, and you're talking about that person, nine times out of ten, that person is not going to reject you for your herpes. They're going to reject you because look at you. You're depressed. You're sad about your own virus. Mm -hmm. This is a scary situation. You're not even making me feel comfortable with this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to reject you because of your lack of self-acceptance, your lack of knowledge about your own virus and what's going on with you, mm -hmm. <laughs> your lack of self-love, not because of your herpes. So please take, take a break. <laughs> I'm going to stop because I know I can go off on tangents. And oh, no, 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 no. This no, ain't no. my life. <laughs> no, no, it's our life. It's our life. So I know that you said, generally speaking, if you're still struggling with um, accepting the diagnosis, if you're still struggling with finding the words, that that means that perhaps you shouldn't even be thinking about dating to have to worry about the disclosure. But folks are dating. So yes. I, I know you have a book, so I don't want you to tell us all the tea. Mm -hmm. Folks need to click the link in your bio and they need to do their appropriate research and invest in it. But generally speaking, if someone were to ask you, like, well, what I'm, I'm okay, I'm in love, um, mm -hmm. I found out maybe I'm already in a relationship, so I'm not trying to get back in the scene. Yeah. What, do you, what do you say? Do you just say it? Like, what do you say? Okay, so say if I'm going to change it a little bit. Say if they got to a level of acceptance that, okay, now I'm ready to disclose. I have herpes. I know about it. I'm okay with it. I've talked about it. I'm good. How do I go about the conversation? It's not a disclosure. It is exactly the conversation that all couples should be having, whether you have herpes or not. It's the mm -hmm. sex talk. <laughs> Our relationship is, you know, growing. I feel like it's about to approach that stage where we're going to be intimate with one another. Um, my sexual health is important to me. Healthy sexual communication and healthy sexual practices are important to me and it's a boundary mm -hmm. for me. And it's time for us to have that talk. So then me and you are going to talk back and forth. When was the last time you had sex? We're going to talk about it. We both are. When was the last time you had unprotected sex? When was the last time you've been tested? Have you ever had an STD test? Be <laughs> you know, have you ever had an STD before? By age 25, one in two people has had an STD. So it's the icebreaker. It's an opportunity now to tell your story. Mm. Don't just tell your story and then all of a sudden want to bombard people with knowledge then you haven't accepted your herpes yet. It shouldn't mm -hmm. be a, hey, I got herpes, but I know this and I know that, and this is, don't do that. I have herpes. You're still the prize. <laughs> if you accepted your herpes, your self-acceptance is enough. They mm -hmm. have to accept it, or they can walk respectfully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I think about your content, mm -hmm. and you're absolutely right in regards to the conversation should be had regardless, right? Yeah. So it's not a, a disclosure of this is something I have and it's not who you are, but it's, a, you know, a diagnosis, but it should be a general conversation from the beginning with every couple yeah. before they engage. Is yeah. that pretty much clear? Yes. That's, that's, uh, Required to see STD results. I, you know, I recently just told the cousins, if you test positive for HSV1 or HSV2, you are a cousin. So when I say cousins, I'm talking about the herpes community. I recently told the cousins that you don't have to disclose until you see their STD results. Make that the disclosure part. <laughs> like, I'm going to bring my STD results and you're going to bring your STD results. And we're both going to look at each other's STD results. So make that the time that you tell someone that you have herpes. Because according to the CDC and the World Health Organization, 85% of people with herpes don't even know that they have herpes. Because they only test you for it if you're showing symptoms. Guess what? Only 10 to 15% of people living with the herpes virus actually show symptoms. That's a small percentage. The normal is to be a silent carrier. So I want to know if you have herpes. So that if you're in a relationship and you get an outbreak, you're not blaming your herpes on me. I want to know if you're coming into the relationship with herpes or what else you got. Because I already have herpes and I don't want anything else, respectfully. We need to be requiring to see full panel STD tests with the addition of herpes because herpes is not on your standard your standard STD full panel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see someone saying that in the comments. So I, I think that the cousins are knowledgeable mm -hmm. and I appreciate them being in the comments and they're making it clear, full panel, yeah. full panel. Okay, so 
not disclosure per se, but a conversation around section and around uh, sexual activity in their past and things of that nature. Both parties bring the results. The results are exchanged. Mm -hmm. One person, obviously, is they already know what the results are going to show. Yeah. The other person is um, they don't have anything that at least comes up. Okay. Then what? the conversation around safe sex and if you don't feel comfortable answering like medical questions you let me know oh. but is there a conversation around all right one of us has one of us doesn't how do we move forward romantically or sexually yes there is a conversation and that conversation is going to vary um some people are more knowledgeable about their virus than others some people have the leisure of being more knowledgeable about their virus than someone who has herpes and doesn't show anything Mm -hmm. You get herpes through skin to skin contact, and you have to come in skin to skin contact with the virus's point of entry. So, let's say if I had herpes on my finger, right? That's called herpetic good love. You would literally have to come in contact with my virus's point of entry. I get my outbreaks right here, so that is my virus's point of entry in order to have a possibility of getting herpes from me. You don't have to, you, you're not touching my arm and getting herpes. You're not touching everywhere on my body and it's automatically getting herpes. It has to be the virus's point of entry. Someone who experienced outbreaks knows that. So they can communicate that to their partner. Hey, this is the viruses. This is, this, this is the area on my body that there is a possibility you may get herpes from me, point blank, period. Mm -hmm. Now, we're the most contagious during viral shedding, meaning... If I'm having an outbreak, that's a clear indication that I'm going through viral shedding. So now, whenever I'm having an outbreak, I need to communicate that with my partner and tell them we can't have sex like this tonight. Maybe we can have sex this way or that way. We can explore different ways, but this way is a no-go because I'm having an outbreak. Or, you know, I've spent years learning my triggers, learning my prodrome symptoms. I can communicate my prodrome symptoms. Hey, babe, one of my prodrome symptoms is popping up. We're going to chill off of having sex that way tonight just because I want to make sure I don't transmit it to you. you mm -hmm. know, that's just me taking extra precautions. Another thing, if your immune system shuts down, if you're not feeling well, you're having a cold, you're having a fever, don't have sex. Herpes virus is a virus that likes to take advantage when the immune system drops. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't fight your immune system. It doesn't hurt your immune system. It waits for your immune system to shut down to go through its replication process, which is the viral shedding moment. So if you're not feeling well, just don't have sex. <laughs> Wait it out. If you're stressed, if you're depressed, if things in your life is not going right, it's not a good time to have sex mm -hmm. because we know how the herpes virus works. Now, a lot of people haven't gotten to the point where they know that about themselves. Mm -hmm. so many people are still caught up on the, damn, I have herpes, who's going to want me, I feel dirty, I feel worthless stage, that they don't give themselves an opportunity to get to the self-acceptance. I love myself and I can live a happy, healthy life with herpes. Mm -hmm. And because of that, it stops them from having that, you know, the important conversation they need to have with their partners in order to protect their partners moving forward. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, someone submitted a question and says, how do I navigate dating sites for herpes? These mostly seem like people looking to hook up without the process of disclosing, even though we've kind of negated the term disclosing, but mm -hmm. that's, that's what was asked. Well, if you do go to my link in my bio, you'll find two different dating sites. I personally, I'm not on them, and I don't support dating sites that are strictly for people with herpes. Um, I have them on my link because I can't push my opinion on everything. You know, some people are just not going to hear me and they want to get to the dating sites. It's, it's a resource. Mm -hmm. I say this to say, um, I think it's a site where people haven't done the work to accept themselves. They're afraid to talk about their herpes. They're afraid to tell other people that they have herpes. So they find safety in these dating apps knowing that everybody else has herpes and they don't have to do it. And now I'm on here trauma bond bonding, both sad about our herpes, both only on here because we got herpes. Mm -hmm. Both only probably about to date each other because we both got herpes. Don't really like each other for real. And it limits you. And I'm not attracted to that energy. I'm not attracted to someone who hasn't done the work. I spent a long time getting myself to where I'm at today compared to who I was when I found out I had herpes. And I don't need anyone dragging me back. So as far as dating sites go, I can't tell you how to navigate because I don't spend time on those dating sites. I don't even have profiles on those dating sites. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, understood. And, and that's fair and that's reasonable. Um, what about uh, concerns of safety? Is there ever um, any advice or any kind of guidance around where to have these conversations? I know that we said it's not disclosure, it's just general, it should be the kind of general conversation one would have. Yeah. But if the conversation doesn't go well, or is there any conversation about where you should be having it? Like a semi-public space or, you know what I mean? Like are folks ever concerned about their safety in sharing information? My thing is you have to feel safe to want to have sex with somebody. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> if you have a, if this person is making you feel like if I tell them I have herpes, they may hurt me that you're searching for a safe place to tell them that you have herpes, that might not be the person you want to sleep with, neither. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, because I, I honestly haven't went, felt like I wanted to sleep with somebody and felt unsafe to the point that I couldn't tell them I had herpes, mm -hmm. no matter the way it goes. So that question is a first for me. I'm stumped. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> the one that came up. And um, I think that it, someone makes you feel unsafe, period, then maybe you shouldn't have sex with that person. You should feel comfortable enough to have that conversation with someone and trust that no matter which way the conversation goes, that you're still safe with them. Yeah. I don't think you're stumped. I, I think you answered yeah. perfectly. I think that's a theme that, that I've heard uh, over the last 20 minutes a few times of mm -hmm. folks slowing down, of not making decisions rash, um, going to clinics, getting their testing, like, not just jumping into a relationship or jumping on a dating app, like just taking your time and processing. Yeah. Um, is there a recommendation of like particular therapists or counselors or groups that those who receive a diagnosis should be attending? Or, is, or if someone needed some help to process their diagnosis, they just found out they're struggling. Is this like a, a general space? Like, is there any advice in that direction? Yes, um, we have a private Facebook group um, you can go get to the private Facebook group in the link in my bio. We show up every thir Thursday for um, some private support group meetings. Um, all the cousins show up, and it's our space to heal. The group is our space to heal as well. Um, there's also, you can book a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me if you like. You can seek a therapist. I go to therapy once a month, y'all, for everything. Um, there's the STD life coach. She is a certified life coach, and she's been at this advocacy work way longer than me. Um, you'll be able to find her on my page as well. That's Miss Coach Felice Spivey. Um, we have tons of resources for you already here. If you just browse through the content, go to the link in my bio. Anything that you need, I promise you we have it. Understood. Uh, someone asked about their concern of being a child care provider mm -hmm. and potentially passing it on to the children that they work with. I know that you just shared about um, ways that you can avoid. Uh, I, I'm a little confused. I don't know. Does that sound familiar? So let me read it. It says, um, I have a question. I am a child care provider. How do I avoid passing it to kids since I'm in such close contact? Okay. So where does your herpes show up? Does it show up on your fingers? Is that why you're asking? Do you, do you have herpetic whitlow? Is it showing up on your lips? Are you kissing the children? Right, right, right. Like, like it, it depends on where your herpes shows up. If your herpes is not showing up in a place on your body that your the children can come in contact with your outbreak site, your children are fine. But here's the thing I try to tell everyone. We get a lot of parents with herpes worried about spreading the virus to their children. Your children can get it from other children. Mm -hmm. Your children can get it from grandma kissing them on the cheek, from auntie kissing them on the cheek. Your children can get it from a handshake. Like, it, <laughs> it can literally come from anyone or everybody in any type of way as long as it's skin to skin content. And kids put a lot of things in their mouth. Yeah. Millions of children already have herpes. A kid in your daycare might find out they have herpes and it won't even be from you. It'll just mm -hmm. be because they had herpes before they even got to the daycare. Mm -hmm. That's how common herpes is. Her there's more people on this planet with a type of herpes than without. Mm -hmm. So in essence, I don't know if the person is still here or willing to share, but in essence, depending on where it shows, as you described us, you just they just have to have those um, safety precautions in place and I mean obviously if you're a child care provider you're not doing anything in like kissing and things of that nature so 
Um, they relatively should be fine. But at the same time, like you said, there are millions of people who have a diagnosis or haven't been diagnosed yet, right? Which is yeah. key. And so you wouldn't be as highly concerned. That makes sense. What kind of uh, final thought could we wrap up with? Like, what is, what is something that is just burning that you want to tell people about her about the diagnosis, about how to function in the world with it? If you're on this live right now, or if you're catching the replay, and you're just finding out you have herpes, um, I always say that no one else in the world knows you have herpes, but you and your physician. Yet you still feel the weight of this stigma. You feel the weight of this stigma because you're the bully in the mirror. And it's time to address the bully in the mirror. The herpes stigma and the herpes virus are two separate things. If you take your time to learn what your virus is, the closer you'll get to self-acceptance and learning how to live a happy, healthy life with the virus. But if you spend your time in the stigma, it's going to sink you in. Don't allow it to sink you in. Go to the link in my bio. You have tons of resources there. When I found out I had herpes, I had nothing. You do, but go to the link in the bio. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate your time. I really, I, I can't imagine the weight that you take on sometimes by default by helping the thousands of people who come across your page. And so I want to thank you for the work that you do, because as you said, you didn't have anyone who can advocate and stand up for and acknowledge. So thank you for the work that you do. And I appreciate you coming on my page to enlighten folks who might be coming in on my end. Again, um, I'm Allison, Certified Dating and Relationship Coach. We had Shayna here today who gave us some insight on how to uh, function in the world and how to feel and how to change the mindset around uh, the stigma that's just inaccurate around herpes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Allison. I appreciate you. Thank you for letting me speak and use your platform. Thanks for reaching out. I appreciate you. Thank of you. Have a good one.